right, in this lesson we are going to be talking about the size of the scale factor. This is a lesson that is chock full of important material. So today's goals, the first one, I can describe the effect on a scaled copy when I use a scale factor that is greater than one, less than one, or equal to one. The second important goal is I can explain how the scale factor that takes figure A to its copy figure B is related to the scale factor that takes figure B to figure A has a special mathematical relationship. So I'd like you to take a look at these cards that we looked at in class today. And I want you to think, just by what you know about scale factor, which of these cards has a scale factor that's exactly one, which one is more than one, and which one is less than one. All right, I hope you said that card one is more than one. Card eight, is exactly one and car three is less than one. And how we know that is because you should notice what happens to the copy when it is created with a scale factor that's greater than one, less than one, or exactly one. When you multiply by a number greater than one, you get a bigger number. So when the scale factor is greater than one, the scaled copy is larger than the original. When the scale factor is less than one, that shrinks the number so the scale copy is smaller than the original. And you will multiply by exactly one, you're going to get a scaled copy the exact same size. So I want you to practice finding exact scale factors. So if I asked you here, what's the scale factor from triangle ABC to triangle DEF? Most of you, I think, would intuitively tell me that the scale factor is two because you can multiply 6 by 2 to get 12. However, if you get more complicated numbers and it's not obvious to you, you can take the corresponding side lengths and divide them. So in this case, 12 divided by 6 is 2. In the same picture, if I asked you, what's the scale factor from triangle DEF to triangle ABC, you're going to notice that this time it's shrinking. Again, if you don't automatically notice that you multiply 12 by 1 half to get 6, you can do 6 divided by 12 to arrive at the answer of 1 half. So it's time for you to try a couple problems on your own. What is the scale factor here from triangle ABC to triangle DEF? So you're going to ask yourself, what do I multiply 18 by to get 12? And you may not know that one. So to figure it out, we can do 12 divided by 18. And when I'm dividing 12 divided by 18, I kind of like to do that as a fraction and then simplify my fraction by dividing by common factors to figure out the scale factor from triangle ABC to triangle DEF is 2 thirds. Now, you should always ask yourself, is that reasonable? Two-thirds is less than one. Did it shrink to go from ABC to DEF? It did, so you most likely came up with the correct scale factor. All right, but what if I ask you what's the scale factor from triangle DEF to triangle ABC? In this case, we're getting to, from a smaller number to a larger number. So I'm saying 12 times what equals 18. And here I can do 18 divided by 12. I can reduce it as a fraction and get three halves, or I can divide, in this case with my calculator, it's a decimal, 1.5. Either of those is an acceptable scale factor. All right, so how can we reverse the scale factor to get back to the original figure when we have a scaled copy? You may have noticed something really cool about those two numbers, three halves and two thirds. They're mathematically called reciprocals. So three-fourths and four-thirds, when we flip that fraction, when two fractions multiply to equal one, they're called reciprocals. And this always happens when we're reversing the scale factor. So quiz yourself here. If the scale factor from A to B is three, then what's the scale factor from B to A? You don't have to go through all the process. You can just say, what is the reciprocal of three? So the scale factor from B to A will be one-third, and it makes sense. It's getting smaller. Try this one. If the scale factor from A to B is 1 half, what is the scale factor from B to A? Again, you're going to find the reciprocal of 1 half, and you're going to arrive at an answer of 2. So we have a lot to digest today, but our most important takeaway is, first of all, scaling can be reversed by using reciprocal factors.
You can divide corresponding side lengths to get the scale factor. But once you divide, make sure that that order makes you a scale factor that makes sense. Should it be less than or less than one or greater than one? If you did not get the right answer, you probably divide it backwards. 